my kids can't get into the magnet school. I'm like, what is something wrong? Is there lead, asbestos? No, because they're black. People who know me knew I was ready for picket signs and protests, okay? Currently, Hartford Public Schools block the number of black kids that can attend these magnet schools. They're saying we have racial quotas. What are the quotas? 75% you know, Hispanic and black, 25% white families. I liken it to Jim Crow 2.0. I call it Jamie Crow. Too many children are being denied a quality education for a quota. We shouldn't be focusing on the child's color to determine who gains access to 26 letters of the alphabet. What message are we sending black people and black children that unless you get into schools with white people, you are doomed, right? When I was in Boston and I was a senior in college, they were just desegregating schools. Where there were a large number of white students, that's where the care went, that's where the books went, that's where the money went. Our theory was move our kids into that school where they're putting all of the resources so that they can get a better education. They were throwing eggs at the window and trying to hit people with them. They were throwing glass at black people and little kids. Are you going back to school tomorrow? No. No way. And I was totally against it. I was running around with flyers telling people, don't let your kids be bused. I felt that children should be allowed to stay in their neighborhoods, just give them equitable resources. So when I got involved with Jeffress O'Neill, I was a little bit ambivalent because I still felt that way. Our country has a history of racism. So there are good intentions of people who try to undo some of the wrongs. And, and I believe people are using this integration like that, like we can make it better. When I moved here, Hartford had the highest illiteracy rate for people who graduated from high school. They didn't have the resources. I thought that I should help. 25 years ago this month, Hartford parents went to court claiming that the city's schools were illegally segregated. And I became one of the original plaintiffs. So fast forward, 1980 something, they win. And so Connecticut said, okay, we're going to build to the tune of several billion dollars, all of the state-of-the-art schools that are going to educate Hartford's children. And so that exploded. They spent about $4 billion in doing that in the hopes to integrate children, bring children from distant suburbs. You know, trying to advocate um, white parents to bring their children into Hartford. In Hartford Public Schools, Magnet and District, apply now. Come and, and experience the ghetto flavor. You know, it might even get some hood credibility. But we don't have that population of those white students to bring into town. It's just not there. We still ended up with a large majority black and brown students. People from suburbia don't want to send their kids there. Send the white families coming to Hartford when you got good schools in their neighborhood. Why would you leave? <laughs> you know, your suburban neighborhood, school district, to have your child bust across town, why would you do that? I wouldn't. So there wasn't enough white students to fill the quota. You have a, a magnet school in a, a, a poor community, and the students don't have access to the school because they're the wrong color. So you have these beautiful schools, and then lo and behold, you hear the very students that you built the schools for cannot even go to the school. They're saying we have racial quotas. What are the quotas? 75% you know, Hispanic and black, 25% white families. We must be being punk. This is a reality show. You have availability, and you have to walk right by it to one of the most failing, unsafe schools in the neighborhood because you didn't meet some racial quota. You've got these kids that are left behind in these deteriorating schools, and they walk out of their homes and pass a school where there are empty seats. So it's like empty seats for no reason, and this kid's dad's knocking at the door. 
It's an issue that I feel like my kids would never have to face. What was your reaction when you first realized? No, this must be some kind of error, some kind of typo or something because it can't be a quota because of the era that we live in. Part of the punishment of a magnet school that doesn't have white children is they strip you of your magnet status. The Board of Education has voted to close three schools next month. There was one school um, in New Haven. Creed is already in violation of a rule. Magnet schools cannot have more than 75% of students be racial minorities. They were not only demagnetized, but they were actually penalized in excess of $100,000. Fine for what? For not having white students. Students and parents not happy with this decision. Then I learned that New Haven school was shut down. I mean dismantled. Which was a high performing school. It was 90% um, people of color and a very successful school. A quality school that served majority black and Hispanic children, which makes sense because if you look at de facto housing patterns, New Haven is majority black and Hispanic. I didn't hear anything about this until last year. So I called the plaintiffs and I didn't know it was LaShawn Robinson. And I know her from other community meetings across the year. I said, LaShawn, what's going on? I said, we're suing Miss Gwen. There's this uh, group of lawyers, Pacific Legal Foundation, they're, um, they're the lawyers for some Harvard parents. And when I Googled, the whole lawsuit was about a specific legal foundation. They were saying, there's this conservative group. They got a hidden agenda. And I get offended when people tell me that. Because if you say it's hidden, that means you think I can't read to figure out what the agenda is. So I'm like, oh, we got to do something about this. We have to change the narrative because they're making it about the lawyers. And they're taking it off, the, the focus off the children. So we did two meetings in Hartford. Welcome to all of you who are actually having a participated part in this conversation. There was a quote, uh, something about like, oh, we want quality integrated schools. Mm -hmm. And my thought bubble was like, how about we want quality schools? Exactly. Now I also attended predominantly black schools and that laid the foundation for everything that I have been able to do. Integrated schools are too often pet projects of groups of elite people. In Topeka, what you had is a very small elite of black people who are spearheading the movement to integrate schools. They went against the black majority. Um, disturbed by the fact that the local NAACP is not supporting mm -hmm. the parents in this lawsuit. Then you tell me that the NAACP is actually not defending the person right, right, right. who is being turned away, right? Why do you think the NAACP is fighting with? I'm gonna need counseling for that question. The black elite really went against the will of the black majority. People often talk about the unintended consequences of integration. I would push back against that. I wanna make clear, there is no quota. Um, there are not physically empty seats. There are empty seats, by the way. Language is being used to undermine the intelligence of the parents in the lawsuit and the parents in this room and being told that you're not seeing what you're actually seeing. Although I'm going to say some things that are critical of Pacific Legal Foundation, I am not saying anything that is critical of their plaintiffs and the parents they represent. Do you remember what you said? Mm -hmm. First of all, we the parents hire who the hell we want to hire. Oh. Um, I'm sick of it, I'm sick of it. We will hire whoever we want to represent our children. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with integrating. I don't care about anybody's politics or anybody's personal agendas. I'm here for the rights of our children. I didn't get a great education. Only because my family didn't know how to advocate for me. I want to make sure that these kids get the great, a great education because they have to take care of us when we get old and they have to run the world. I don't care about the segregation anymore. I just want the children in my community to get a quality education. And if the seats are available, fill them up. There are black people that are educated that didn't go to school with Caucasian peers. That there's no such thing as an all-black school that does well. What kind of self-hatred would it take for me to internalize that message? And so as a parent, 
would mean a lot to parents knowing that we've done the best that we could by our children. Anyway, we just have to do better by children.